Tonight on Border Security International. You told me you didn't check in any bags? You're, you're lying to me. How much currency are you traveling with? 400,000. I've never seen this much currency. So they're showing me that there's something massive in there that I need to have a better look at. It's rush hour at Canada's busiest airport. CBSA officers make the rounds in Terminal 1. Where are you coming from today? What's the reason for the trip? How many suitcases do you have now? A Canadian returns after six weeks in Africa, traveling a little light. When I interviewed him at primary, uh, he told me that he didn't check in any bags, so that was the first red flag. These are all your bags? Yep. You pack them yourself? Yep. You know what's inside of them? Yep. Okay, I want to see your uh, travel itinerary, please. Thank you. Traveler is coming from Somalia, but he was transiting from Warsaw. Why did you go through Warsaw? Because it's stupid ticket. Hold on a second. So you purchased this ticket just yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Would you please show me where the cost of the ticket is? Look at them here. About 400 and back. How much? 400. It says book online now and save up to 400 pounds. That doesn't say that the ticket costs 400 pounds, sir. OK, oh, here's your ticket cost. See that? It says $1,830.14. That's how much the ticket cost you. Do you remember paying that amount two days ago? Why did you just tell me that the ticket cost you 400 pounds? The Alder Grove Land Crossing is a popular port of entry for American outdoorsmen, and sometimes they bring more than just a taste for adventure. Any alcohol or tobacco on board, guns or other weapons. A hunter from Washington State is towing a friend's boat to Vancouver Island on a Canadian trailer. It's not normal to have a Washington State vehicle towing a BC trailer into Canada, so there was questions why that might be. So the truck itself will register to you? Yes, sir. OK. And the boats registered Canada, the states? I believe it's registered in the states. OK. Now, it's on a, a BC trailer. He bought that last year in Port McNeil. We serviced it back here, and now I'm taking it back. All right. All the stuff on board, yours, know where it came from, how it got there? Absolutely. When do you see yourself coming back, then? You're going to be here. All right. I'm just going to go up there, fish, turn around, come back. We'll go out, uh, just do some verifications here. Just have a seat for me. OK. If you want to start on the boat, I'll go to the sure. truck. Sounds good. Tons of little hiding places in here. And some ammunition. She's got a box of uh, nine millimeter ammunition, a full box here, and then a partial box behind the other seat back. Where's the gun? Packages from all over the world arrive at the Vista Mail Center every day, and some get more attention than others. Iris Mail is from source countries that we find prohibited goods, illegal goods from, on a regular basis. One package in particular catches the officer's eye. OK, so the parcel's from uh, Trinidad, Tobago, going to a local address. This appears to be a statue. There's two anomalies based on the picture here. I can see a density difference. So we can see here and here, there's two areas with uh, where the density difference is on the x-ray. So they're showing me that there's something massive in there that I need to have a better look at. I'm going to open the parcel to see if there's anything inside. With more flights to Asia than any other airport in the country, Vancouver International is Canada's Pacific gateway. Where are you coming from? What brings you to Canada? Today, a Chinese traveler says her only plans are to stay in Vancouver visiting a friend. Do you know any other friends in Canada? Mm, no, only this friend. On your visa application, you put that you're coming here on a tour. Yes. Banff and Jasper. Yes. 
So is that your actual plan? Because you told me you were just coming to stay in Vancouver. I have no exact plan to other cities. Lying on a visa application is considered misrepresentation, so it is a concern. So on this trip, any business? Uh, for just for traveling, but before I went to a world for business. OK, but this time, no business yeah, at no. all. OK, and you can have a seat over there. We'll okay. be back, OK? OK. Officers search the traveler's cell phone to verify her story. But she said on this trip she's not doing any business. She's been here before to talk to different universities, and then she does the recruiting for them in China. ICF Vancouver participation. She's coming here to work. Is she? Yeah. Why lie? Some ammunition. At the land crossing, officers discover undeclared bullets in an American hunter's truck. She's got a box of uh, nine millimeter ammunition. It needs to be declared. At primary, the subject declared no ammunition, no firearms. Finding ammunition will raise our level of concern, right? Because if we found bullets, uh, where's the gun? So it's just a first aid kit? Yeah, it looks like it. There was no weapon found within the vehicle. So I decided we should check his person, making sure that the firearm wasn't on him anywhere. Let's get you to take your hands out of your pocket. We located some ammunition inside the vehicle. Do you own firearms in the US? Yes. Whereabouts are those stored right now? At my home. Let me get you to pull your pant leg up and just show me the top of your socks. One at a time. Yeah, the other side. Pull the inside of the pockets out for me. After my uh, pocket exam of the, the individual, no weapon was found on his person. Okay. Outside, the officer uh, asked you specifically if there's any weapons, ammunition, that kind of thing in the vehicle, and you said no to her. Why is that? It's not illegal to carry ammunition here. No, exactly. it's not illegal. But here's the problem. If we find ammunition in a vehicle, after the question's been asked to you at primary, and, and you've given a negative answer, you've said no to that answer, then obviously you can understand my concern. He was able to clearly state to me, yes, he did own firearms, and I was satisfied uh, no weapon um, was being brought to Canada. I have a seat back out there. With his 9mm stateside where it belongs, the traveler's allowed forward with a bit of advice. I just would suggest in the future, maybe if we get asked a question about ammunition farms, just make sure you're aware of what's in the truck before you come up. Thank Back you, sir. Here. Have a good evening. All right. We've cleared the gentleman. He'll be released in on his way up north. At Toronto's Pearson International Airport. Why did you just tell me that the ticket cost you 400 pounds? A Canadian returning from Somalia with only a carry-on bag seems to be experiencing financial amnesia. $1,830.14. That's how much the ticket cost you. The ticket was quite expensive, $1,800. He just purchased it yesterday. The style of his responses uh, don't make sense to me. Please empty the contents of your pockets onto the table, please. What kind of work do you do? I do for the, what do you call about the um, shuttle bus like that. Shuttle bus? Where do you drive a shuttle bus? Well, I, I left the job for the 2009 like that. Oh, so you haven't, you don't work right now? So you're unemployed? Yeah, I'm unemployed. Okay. Why didn't you just tell me you're unemployed? Why did you say that you drive a bus? Well, I, sh I used to be driving. Yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about now. He tells me that he's employed, and then later on admits to me he's actually unemployed. Um, doesn't sound like he has the means to travel to me. You're unemployed, uh -huh. okay? Yes? Yes. You just spent $1,800, mm -hmm. okay, on a ticket to come back two days ago, mm -hmm. okay? How do you afford to pay $1,800 for a ticket when you're not even working? There's, there's two baggage tags, sir. Remember you told me you didn't check in any bags? Yeah. Yeah, well, I just found two baggage tags that say you did check in what? two bags. So they're showing me that there's something massive in there that I need to have a better look at. At the mail center, x-rays reveal suspicious anomalies inside a package from Trinidad and Tobago. I don't see 
any indicators that might suggest it's been um, tampered with. Everything seems very solid. I'm not gonna be able to pry anything out, so likely I'm gonna have to drill into the object in order to see if there's anything inside. Okay. Look at that. Canadian schools are some of the best in the world, and thousands of international students attend them every year. Do these bags belong to you? Yes. Do you know what is inside the bags? OK, and did you pack them yourself? Yes? In Toronto, a CBSA officer verifies the declaration of a Turkish student returning for another semester. You go to school over here. What are you taking in school? In hotel management. Oh, how's that going? Nice. Good. All this clothing, who bought that for you? My mom. Your mom bought it for you. How often have you been traveling right now? In and out of the country? Uh, not really often. All right. Any currency? Uh, yes. How much money are you bringing with you? Ten something. Ten thousand dollars. So this question basically asks you, My do you son. have equal or more than ten thousand dollars, OK? Lying on a declaration card can make a traveler inadmissible. Why did you not declare it? So likely I'm gonna have to drill into the object in order to see if there's anything inside. At the mail center, it seems more than just artistry went into this sculpture from the Caribbean. Look at that. So there's definitely a white substance inside the object, so I'm gonna do a quick test. We have a cocaine wipe here. So if I wipe this and it comes up blue, then it's a positive for uh, suspect cocaine. Look at that. I'm just going to let my superintendent know what uh, I found so that we can contact uh, intelligence to see if they want to take a look at it. Unfortunately, it's pretty common to find illegal substances secreted into things or hidden within items. The whole point of our job is to find things that you're trying to hide. So you can keep trying to hide the goods. But I'm going to find them. Back in Vancouver... She's coming here to work. Is she? Yeah. A cell phone search reveals this traveler from Shanghai is fudging the truth about her Canadian holiday plans. I gave her an opportunity to see if she's coming here for any business purposes. She said no. OK, so other than vacation, is there anything else that you're going to be doing in Canada? Mm, sorry? Other than vacation, is there anything else that you're going to be doing in Canada? Maybe I will, I will see my schools because I send students to, to Canada. So you knew you were coming in here for a workshop and yes. to do some tours with schools. Yes. yes. But there's no reason for you to lie. A lot of passengers think that if they just lie about something simple, it makes their experience with us a lot easier. But we know when you're not being honest. Oh, what's this? You didn't declare your food. It asks you here, do you have any meat product? To which you said no. Importing any meat like this is actually considered a very serious offense. We can issue a violation for, oh, and a penalty for $1,300. There's two baggage tags, sir. Remember you told me you didn't check in any bags? Yeah. Across the country, a Canadian traveler returning from Somalia has some explaining to do. You told me you didn't check in any bags, and you have two baggage tags with you, OK? I, I don't see the bags like that. Where's the bags? So you want to see the bags before yeah. you admit that you have them, OK? So you're, you're lying to me, straight out. Well... I mean, how can you explain this? You checked in two bags, sir? 
You checked in two bags, yes? Where's the two bags I checked in? That's what I'm not asking you, the, the, you're not answering my question. I'm asking you a simple question. You checked in two bags, correct? In Warsaw? Yes, I did. Yes, you did, okay. What was inside of the two bags, sir, that you checked in? You want to know what my guess is? At Vancouver International Airport, an American television producer has something to declare. How much currency are you traveling with? 400,000. What's that currency for? The pay crew and pay uh, vendors. We're producing a TV commercial. We tried to open up a Canadian bank account, but because we're not a Canadian company, they wouldn't allow us to. Really? It's all Actor. cash. It's all what denominations? Hundreds, fifties, and twenties. As long as you declare your currency, you can bring as much as you want. So he had $400,000 on him. He declared it because he needs it for business purposes. We're going to have to count it just to verify it. The officer takes the traveler and the cash to a secure counting room. I've never seen this much currency. I didn't have any concerns in regards to the legitimacy of the money that he had. The uh, gentleman declared the money correctly. It's a big concern for us is currency, the proceeds of crime, and so we're looking for it. So. Well, they make it difficult on the people that are actually trying to do business. Don't they? Yeah. The money checks out. Looks like the show will go on. Probably not a good idea to travel by yourself with that kind of money. Thank you very much. Sir. You're welcome. Back in Toronto, a different story is playing out for this Turkish student who failed to declare the money in her bag. Why did you not declare it? You've traveled a few times, right? So you, you should know, know about this actually. When you fill this out, it is a legal document. You are responsible for filling it out properly. The question asked, do you have the equivalent of Canadian $10,000 or more? She said no. So for me, that's a simple black or white question. You have US dollars here. Which currency is higher, US or Canadian? Exactly, right? Straight away, you should have known you were over. After a quick conversion, this student's stash of cash is worth over 11,000 Canadian. So just explain to me why you did not... Uh, no, I just didn't pay attention. Like, sometimes it's hard to understand. She's been studying in Canada. She speaks English, and uh, she is aware that she had the money. Because you did not declare the currency properly, I'm seizing the money you will have to pay a penalty to get it back. Do you understand me so far? Like how much? This is your first offense and you were honest about it. So I'm going with the lowest level of penalty. It's $250 to get it back. If this happens again, it's not 250. It becomes 2,500. Happens again, it becomes 5,000. Okay, and if it keeps happening, you may not get the money back. She paid the penalty, received the money, and I think she didn't learn her lesson. Many people make mistakes. CBSA officers in Vancouver have uncovered a Chinese traveler's stash of sausage. What's this? You didn't declare your food. And her plan to work in Canada. So you knew you were coming in here for a workshop and yes. to do some tours with schools. Yes. yes. But as it turns out, the traveler's plans aren't considered business. We're satisfied that the work that you're coming here to do, you don't require work permit. You can still come in as a visitor. But the meat is prohibited item. It cannot come into Canada. So this document is a notice of violation at the port of entry, and it's a $1,300 penalty, OK? Could you please uh, give me a chance? No, we're not negotiating this. If you want to play it today at the port of entry, I, I, I the penalty is reduced by 50%. So it, t it comes down to $650. Your decision right now is whether you want to pay today okay. or, um, or if you want to appeal this decision, in which case. I, I won't pay. OK. I need your signature here. And then you get to keep one copy as well. You can grab your bags, and we'll take you to the cashier to pay the, pen the penalty. OK. okay. okay. I'm 
asking you a simple question. You checked in two bags in Warsaw, correct? Yes, I did. A Canadian returning from Somalia initially told officers he only has two small carry-on bags. We did some checking with the airline and they verified that there were two extra bags that he had checked in. What was inside of the two bags that you checked in? You want to know what my guess is? My major suspicion right now is that he might be smuggling chat. Chat is a leaf-like substance, kind of like a stimulant or amphetamine. You want to know what I think was inside of the two bags? Yeah. Chat. Yes, right. It was chat? Yeah. Okay. Chat grows uh, in Africa, uh, in the uh, Ethiopia and Somalian region, um, but it's most often transited into Canada through Europe. So Warsaw in this case. Okay, face that wall, please. Put your hands behind your back, stop. Put your hands behind your back. I'm arresting you because mm -hmm. I believe on reasonable grounds that you smuggled or attempted to smuggle goods into Canada. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah, I understand. Okay. The next step will be uh, RCMP will interview him and they will decide from there uh, what course of action they will take. Next time on Border Security International. Okay, so I'm going to have to look at what that is because that's an anomaly there. Oh, come on. I've got something and I shouldn't have. What do you have? Is there anything on board that I should know about? I've got a gun here.